Yes, so I went for a Fitbit Charge 3. This is just bought on my own money. Maybe a bit strange for me to go into a fitness tracker when I'm normally doing so much about Sunto watches and that sort of thing, so more outdoorsy things. But actually, I am always a bit torn about such things because, yeah, I love navigation and all of that, but at the same time, most of the time what you do and what I'm among the people would argue what you need to do for a fit and active and healthy life is not the special outdoors activities, but the everyday life. Most of my training or whatever kind, most of my moving is running for personal bests to get to the railway station to the train I need and not exactly trying to become king of mountain on Strava or anything like that. Now with my knee or probably a tendon there are causing some issues still. That's especially much the case. And so I wanted to have a look at this. It's still something where I have a chance of returning it. Fitbit even in Europe offers a 45 days return period, which is really nice for trying out something like that. I might yet decide to return it, but I'm also not unhappy about it. It is something where you really need to know what you are getting though. And the Charge 3 is, as they say, an advanced fitness tracker. My first impressions of it are, it is quite nice, it's not too wide, not too large, a bit, mm, well, jewelry-like even, I would say. I'm not exactly sure if I were concerned about my masculinity, I would like it too much. It is a bit, well, I don't know, like some bracelet, but, well, in the same vein you could say that it is pretty unobtrusive, so this is also nice. And of course there is a pretty wide selection of straps you could get. Some raw green leather probably would make it look quite a bit different. One thing I noticed about it is that it's actually less of a smartwatch-like thing even than some, many I feel, reviews would have you believe. Yes, you can easily see the time, you can see your heart rate, you can see how many steps you have done, well, how far you are to your goal, you can see notifications if there are any, you can see some data that was tracked, and of course while I want to get there I don't, you see your battery level, your steps, your heart rate in one of four zones, you see how many kilometers you supposedly have uh, traveled, what distance what number of calories you have burned, how many floors you have gone up or down, how much, I don't actually know what this is, and your last night's sleep. But then actually there's no more data here. You can get to exercise recording, to some relaxation exercises, set timers or turn on off alarms, which you have set up in the app. Check the weather from your connected phone or set up some settings like brightness, like vibrations, like notifications during sleep, heart rate measurement. Yeah, I just checked the about. So there is actually quite little on it like this. This is quite interesting, I found, because it also very quickly turns the display off again to save battery, obviously, and to get to its long battery life of around a week. That's nice, but at the same time I see turn itself on a lot when I'm cooking and not necessarily turn itself on for quite long enough when I actually want to check something. Yeah, but it is really totally a tracker. Where on a smartwatch you always get shown at least the time, on more of a smartwatch even the complications, some things like that. Here you get mainly the tracking. So most of the data is in the app. That's where you have it, that's where you get most of the possibilities for analysis and everything. Basics are here, but everything else in the app. That's a very different approach from anything else. In Sunto it's still not as much that the watches themselves do in terms of special features. I mean, don't get me wrong, you get quite a few essentials, but things like sunrise, sunset, some notifications, uh, you have timers and stopwatch and that sort of thing. 
But what I'm thinking of is like if you have a Garmin Fenix or something like that, then you get a whole lot more. By now you could even load your Spotify playlist onto a Fenix. So it is much more of a smartwatch in that regard. And if you have an Android phone and a Wear OS real smartwatch, then there is even more which you can do down to Google Assistant and whatnot. So there is really quite this continuum from total smartwatch, low battery, but you can have maps and whatnot, and Google Assistant and everything. Uh, Garmin, their way of having many, many of the smartwatch features, but really being more focused on activity tracking, outside sports tracking, all of that sort of thing, and guidance. The Suntos, which are even less of those smartwatch features, and more of the focus on battery life, especially with the Sunto 9, and the basics, the fitness tracking that you really need, and just a few add-ons like steps tracking, some of that. And finally, something like the Charge 3, which at least now, I mean, there's even more coming with, if you really do it, the sleep, apnoa, tracking, and all of those features going towards health. So here you have the least obtrusive things, something which is more like jewelry after fashion, but tracks a lot of data and is set up to display a lot of it and in the app to guide you through the setup and to help with analyzing everything and having everything available at your fingertips, finger swipes to check it out.